Hey guys, my name is Leif Wallace. And my name is Fabian Thorpe. <laughs> and welcome both of, well, welcome everyone. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> everyone. Yeah, all of you who are here. Uh, welcome to the Next Level Podcast. Absolutely. So, come on, absolutely. Fabian. Why um, are we even doing this? Why are we here today? So you know what? This is the thing, right? We have um, at times stopped and started, but 2024 yeah. is a special year for us. Come on. It's a special year in relation to our business, yeah. um, Code Group, and the group of companies that we run within that. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, this is our way of connecting we are really passionate about empowering. We're passionate about teaching. We're passionate about about sharing a good, I mean, for me, over 15 years of experience mm. in business and entrepreneurialism. Yeah. Yourself, over 10 years now yeah, of as experience a in, yeah. as a designer in that space. And, yeah. you know, my primary focus has been sales, yours in marketing mm. and digital marketing. And we felt that mm. coming together sharing our experience in working Mm. with global brands um, in delivering um, for amazing clients that now it's time that we want to share and we want to share the knowledge we have in an unapologetic way. Correct, correct. We don't want to fluff it. There is no, hey guys, everyone jump in the air and all of that kind (laughs) of business, right? This is just very clearly stating and very clearly piecing together for you guys mm. exactly what we have learned and what we're doing and how we push forward and, that's it. and, and that's just it. really about the failures and successes that we've had yeah that's it, that's it. Poor, right? and one of the key things that we really want to do this year is really be honest yes. about okay failures mistakes yes successes and really come from a position of actually building a business yeah so like fabian has uh well there's kind of four companies within the group Yep. at the moment um and then on the flip side me going to be sharing my ex- design and marketing expertise to help people to know how you build your websites how do you design yes. how do you give market how do you market your business but also it's good for us to share things from personal experience like how you navigate in marriage how you navigate in children how you like, navigate in just mental health and stuff like that all, all, all of all those the, things all of those things yeah. are super important yeah. super key and we want to we want to share them um, from a perspective of owners business owners trying to um trying to understand and navigate what is a, a mm. fast changing and ever changing world in I, hear you, place, right? I hear you so one of the key things that we really want to discuss today yeah really comes down to um how we even got to this place okay first i want to talk about this bible text that i love you know it says for psalms 37 verse 4 it says say that when you delight yourself in the lord he will give you the desires of your heart Big text. You know what I mean? Huge text. Come on. And I love I, this one. I, I love that we're grounded and we're starting on this mm. because it's about desire and purpose is one of the real reasons yeah. why people will even consider becoming an entrepreneur oh. or wanting to start their own business. Yeah, mm. And and often I say to people, I say, are you sure your reason for starting your business is an actual desire? Yeah. Or is it just you looking at something yeah. and thinking that it's cool, right? That's it. And that's, that's it. the real honest question you yeah. have to start with yourself when looking at this entrepreneurial journey, right? Mm. And one of the key things that we've seen is when you just go down it for the route of money, it either just like fizzles out. Yeah. Because, because <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your passion for it just starts to dip. Money can mm. money some people believe that money is a fuel for passion. Yeah. It's two different things. Yeah you can be attracted or you can be envious of something because Mm. of its monetary value. But real passion is something that comes from within. Mm. It's something that is not always easily diagnosed, but it's the unsaid fuel that will fuel your ambition. Passion is what gives you that discipline for when you don't feel like doing something in the morning. That's it. That's it. I want to just play this video to you quickly so you can see this. Uh, it's from a guy that I know of called Chris Doe, but he talks about passion, purpose, and I think it's quite He's, interesting what he says. We're going to talk about how to find and do work that you love. Let me introduce you to this concept. It's called Ikigai, and it means thing that you live for. And it's broken down into four circles like this, and it talks about what do you love, what does the world need, what do you get paid money for, and what are you good at. So what happens if you love something and the world needs this? This is considered a mission. Now, if you're good at something and you love it, but you don't get paid for it, that would be considered your passion. And if you're good at it and you're paid for it, that's called your profession, a job. 
And then the last one is the world needs it and you're paid for it, but you may not be good at it. So we're going to call this a vocation. So Ikigai is to say that we must find something here. Our reason for being, and this is really important. You must love it. You got to get paid for it. So all these things are in balance. And if we can design our lives around that idea, we'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier than we've ever been. Then you love that faith. It's, it's like simple. a simple principle very that just gives you like very straightforward, uh, very direct ways of understanding. It's amazing, you know right? I mean? That you can have, that you can think about something or the yeah. viewpoint that you're thinking about what you love, you think about what you need, uh. um, what the world needs. You think about something which you're good at mm. and that you can be paid for it and you combine those things. Now, yeah. can you imagine- That's like living in balance is what the Japanese have come up with here. But, yeah. but imagine if you use that yeah. principle for before you start a business. Mm. So many people would never enter the entrepreneurial journey because they'd be mm. like, hold on, it doesn't tick all the boxes. Yeah, 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 correct. So correct. so that that is a kind of level thought mm. that I would encourage anybody to to consider. Yeah. Not not for perfection, but to consider when started to walk down this entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. And another thing as well that we've seen is also failure is almost inevitable that like you can't you can't like failure and becoming a business owner like, like you talk from it from your experience babe. so I, you know I, I, mean? I i say that you know we say losses we say lessons not losses right and mm. in other words that i believe that some of the greatest successes that any business owner would admit to have often been powered by the lessons they've learned from things not going well come on right come on, come on. and so and so effectively um if we look at life and we consider that if things are not going to go well, it is simply a lesson to show me what to do better next time. That's it. All of a sudden now the anxiety and the anticipation and the worry in relation to failure mm. now gets removed because you've conquered failure. Mm. You now understand that failure simply is a, is a, is a not very good branding for lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a negative connotation <laughs> on lessons. On. It's bad branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to rebrand failure. Mm. We need to rebrand failure in a way to say that, yeah. look, I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to, to try more than one and more than one way mm. of getting to my goal. That's it. So if That's I think it. that I'm excited mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the opportunity to try out different ways to get to my goal, yeah. then all of a sudden, where is the failure in it? Come on, come on. The failure changes to anticipation. Yeah. That if this doesn't work, guess what, Leif? Yeah. It means we have another, another chance, chance to try That's it. and and, That's it. and succeed in yeah. what we're doing. Well, one of my favorite authors, uh, and you kind of touched on it earlier when you spoke, his name is John Maxwell. And he says, sometimes you win, yes. sometimes you learn, you never lose. There you go. You know, and I think, I think in our first business, that's yes. a mindset I really wish I adopted even more. Because I remember when our first business failed, I was thinking, man, Fabio's not going to work with me again. Like, I was just so <laughs> negative. Like, Fabio's not going to work with me again. Because I made some, when I mean basic mistakes, family, like basic, simple mistakes. And and, and let's, be, made, you know so I mean? let's be clear, we made, yeah. we yeah. made. Yeah. I feel you. We like, made, on, we on, made on. those mistakes yeah. together. But those mistakes have catapulted catapulted us mm. and prepared us for what we're going through now almost mm. i give it the the event like when neo is it finally realizes he's neo in the matrix okay, and okay. the bullets are flying and he's kind of seen them coming yeah, come on sometimes it feels <laughs> like that now like we will see glaring things yeah. um yeah and we say to ourselves okay well wow. like even today like i don't mm. want to go into it but we, we clearly had a position where we thought to ourselves, we really want someone to work with us. Yeah, but how but are we, we going to make this work? Of how are we going to make yeah, it work? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it just took for us to look above. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. my mentor, um, one of my mentors, my biggest mentors, mm. he says that look from above, look yeah. at things from above. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. sometimes you have to take yourself mm. out of the situation and look. And when we look from above, we came mm. up with multiple solutions. Come on. That could make it work. Come on. And I think that is what you, you, as you say, the lessons that you learn. Yeah. Being humble, being disciplined to know that from those lessons, yeah. you could take things to that's the it. next level. That's it. And that's one of the things that we love about why we call it the next level. Because yeah. there's always a next level. There's always a next space and place that you can grow to. One of the key things that I've seen, especially as we begin to work together and as yeah. we talk about purpose. Yeah. And I think we should even do an episode on it, which is like 
aligning with someone Absolutely. in relation to your purpose. Right. The Bible you know talks I mean? about being unequally yoked, yeah, right? Yeah, and iron sharpens iron. Do you know Correct. What I mean? And you got to know, like, the, the thing with Leif and I is that mm. we know our lanes. Yeah? 100%. We First know business, it. <laughs> it was a bit like... We were crossing lanes. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> we were crossing lanes. But this time, we're so careful. Yeah, this is what you're so, good at. Cool. We're so very clear as to 100%. what's good at. And that yeah. discipline yeah. goes forward in your team because what, yeah. what it allows for is that we can trust each other mm. to be certain as to what it is that we're 100%. doing. We can trust yeah. each other to be like, okay, I know Leif has got this. I know strategically he understands where we're going forward. I yeah. can then focus on business development. I can 100%. focus on taking us where we need to go. And I know that strategically, yeah. if we put that, one thing we have in common is we both work really well under pressure. And that's not always a good thing because sometimes it's like we leave things to the pressure point but and now like i believe do you would you yeah. agree that we're learning to plan ahead now we're yes learning to plan we, but, forward now, bro right? it's not us we've got two amazing people in our team absolutely i just want to big them up corinne and nicole they might see this uh they are the workhorses absolutely. behind the scenes who absolutely. make this engine move do you see what i'm saying absolutely and they've been revolutionary to how we've been able to move forward two amazing women that we have in our team that we just really appreciate as well. I, I love that. Um, I saw a quote from Stephen Bartlett and they, mm. they asked him, what is your responsibility in your business? Uh. And he says, his responsibility, his sole responsibility in his business mm. is to hire the best people and create an environment that allows them to perform the best. He says, that's his only job. Come on, come on because everything else is delegated for them to execute and that's how he's yeah. able to run and be the dragon's den and being able to have multiple businesses yeah, and the team you then realize that your core competency yeah is recruiting the best people and creating the best environment for them to that's excel. it i see and that's where every entrepreneur and every business owner should want to attain to yeah because if you're at that level where that's your focus hmm. one it means your business is running Two, it means that it's functional. Mm. And three, it means that it's scalable because you have more people that you can speak to and grow with. So that's, that's super it. important. That's it. No, I feel you, man. And that's why when it came on to like how you actually start your business. Yes. So like we know, okay, let's say you know your purpose. Yes. You know this is what you want to do. When it comes on to now when you want to start your business. Yes. I love Fabian. Talk me through like your first business Wow. Compared to now when you're starting business and how you think about it. Do you know what I mean? So is, let's start with your first business. Is, so my first business, wow. So that was in 2002. I think 2002. I'm going to get some water. Uh, 2002. I was with my dead time partner, Mark. And we were in the telecommunications um, okay. side of things. Actually, no. That's silly. My first business was actually a digital marketing business. Come on. <laughs> and um, it Full was, circle, yeah. yeah, it was called Elite yeah. Commerce. I okay. created the name Elite Commerce. Yeah. And really, I had one client, my best friend's dad, mm. um, basically gave me my first contract as mm. a, as a, as a, as a consultant. And my role and responsibility was um, build, re, re, working on the rebrand for his business. It was a contact lens manufacturer at the time. Mm building a website and um building marketing materials and man it was such a learning experience because mm. i was what i would call a textbook entrepreneur what i mean by that is that i read everything that i found on being an entrepreneur <laughs> and what digital marketing was <laughs> had zero experience yeah, yeah. but this is I where i should have realized that, that i would yeah. be good at sales because i just oh. talked my way into the position yeah. right yeah and um I, I didn't have a clue about bookkeeping, accounting, any of these things. Mm. My primary concern was that I wanted to go out, win clients and deliver solutions. Mm. And I was blessed to have the opportunity where someone would trust and believe in me and believe in my ideas um, for scaling and growth. I learned some incredible lessons. There's a video clip which I've shared on my social channels, which tells a story about one of the biggest lessons I learned and it was in relation to copyright and marketing, right? And uh, do you want me to share it real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, on. So basically, we were rebranding our offering, what mm. we had, which was for, um, uh, uh, we, were, we were doing some specialist hospital-specific lenses. Mm. 
and because as a content lens manufacturer the, u- the unique selling point or as we'll talk about later our irresistible offer oh, come on was uh-huh. the fact that we had breathable materials so we uh-huh. had these amazing materials which we had scientifically designed which would help um, lenses to fit better on the eye but also mm-hmm. allow them to breathe so they were more comfortable and it felt you could feel the lens even less and okay. for the standard lens that's okay but when you're dealing with people with toric or keratoconus type eyeballs which wow. they, 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 their eyes are a different shape or they may be an obtuse shape or like a golf ball in some cases mm. having a lens that can fit around the eye is very unique yeah. and my best friend's father was it still is a pioneer in that space mm. and so we decided that our primary customers were hospitals. Mm. So the plan was that we would go out and we would needed to create an attractive brand for these lenses mm. in order to go out to different um, hospitals and, 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 and sell them. Mm-hmm. So I came up with the idea of um, naming the lens um, the Quattro 2000 mm. because I thought it was a cool name. It was very innovative. It was young and it would kind of give that kind of, you know, mechanical type feel to mm. it. So we went ahead, we um, we designed new brochures, we created a logo, we pieced everything together, and then we basically put all of the content on our website. Okay. And we went out and started marketing and started sending brochures out to hospitals. Yeah, so this is what, 2002? Like this is 2002. Yeah, yeah, 2002, yeah. yeah. And so as we sent it out, we sent the brochures out, um, the response back from the ophthalmologists at hospitals and bear in mind, listen, our clients are global. Okay. So it's not just because it's specialists, you could be an ophthalmologist in the Middle East or so yeah. and you are yeah. having those kind of clients. So you're searching for a contact lens manufacturer that can create these specialist type lenses. Mm. So anyway, so we, we did that. And then one day I remember coming into the office mm. and we, um, we literally the fax machine was just going off like like okay. the fax machine was just it just kept going fax machine day and these these are fax <laughs> machines some of you guys will know what a fax machine Pre-email is that. yeah <laughs> free email you gotta go the google what a fax, fax machine, machine. Yeah. anyway so basically mm. the paper was just going and going and going and we're like, what is taking up the fax line mm. so much so i went and had a look at it and it was a cease and desist notice from audi raw yeah so basically we did i didn't think to check about the copyright around the name quattro mercy and obviously audi at the time had just branded and came out releasing the quattro in relation to it being a terminology for a spec of their vehicles Mm. right you remember the Mm. audi quattro yeah yeah yeah. come on they basically said that we had something like 48 hours to stop pull the information from our website and everything what what they had at that early stage was somebody who had that a tool that was checking yeah. to see That's in deep. the public domain That's deep. if their um anything that yeah. they had registered against their brand or yeah. copyright was being used. And they trigger it. And they triggered wow. it. And literally That's they fast. didn't even they didn't even send us a warning letter. This came from their solicitors. Uh uh-uh. uh so um we quickly had to forget any investment we made in materials. We just had to scrap everything and 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 we came up with an alternative name like the QR S something yeah. or something like to that to make sure there's no you make sure that there was no thing yeah, in that's place. a big deal like especially in the early days of your business looking into even basic Absolutely. trademark now reviews, you could you imagine I mean? as a, as a consultant mm-hmm. your client would expect you to, to know, know or to look into what is being mm-hmm. done or something like that and mm-hmm. the reality is that I was so young in business I was in my early yeah. very early twenties that. It was a lesson to a say, lesson. hold on, you need to research the market that you are yeah. in. It's yeah. only good for you to talk yourself into into a situation. Yeah. But if you are not a practitioner, if you not have not research, if you and this is one of the things with mm. you and I, what I love mm. is the fact that we are specifically chosen to stay within our oh, core I mean, dependencies. Yeah. Right? And there's some years behind us. And there's years, years behind us. So yeah. I don't I don't need to talk about mm. I may know about other things. Yeah. But I want to talk to people about sales. I want to talk to them about how you present your customer. Mm. I want to talk about your unique selling point. I want to talk mm. about conversions. I want mm. to talk about how do you speak to someone networking. Yeah. Those are the things which I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel that it's enough for us to share, especially yeah. in this time when yeah. entrepreneurialism yeah. And startups are such, it's a, they're buzzwords, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are starting it. A lot of people don't have guidance or know what to do. Right. So it's hard for people right now. 
for real. Yeah. And so now and it's a lot of information. So how do you know who to trust? Which correct. Is a big deal. You know correct. what I'm saying? So you want to put yourself in a mm. position where you're like, okay, I, I can I check that this person's validated? You know, mm. it's so interesting. Like, Leif, you're the one who brought me out <laughs> to even talk about my experiences. I know. Right? He like, wanted I to just stay in the show. Like. I don't even... <laughs> I don't like like talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. I'm getting nervous. I'm <laughs> too, I understand, man. You just don't, you just don't want the limelight. I'm, it's it's, yeah. it's hard. It's different, and yeah. and I think it's, it's something we have now. to break past mm. because there is a negative connotation sometimes, especially within mm. the black community, right? If we're honest, yeah, honestly, yeah. about sharing successes. I hear you. And what has kind of encouraged me, as well as failures, bro, yeah. or as well as losses or lessons, yeah. right? Yeah. And what's encouraged me is seeing more and more. Um, entrepreneurs of color coming out and talking about yeah. their successes. Like yeah. we've seen Dean Forbes, 100%. we've seen like it's a number of right. um, yeah. people out there. There's young mm. people as well who are mm -hmm. doing amazing things. Some mm. of my friends like uh, Mercedes Benson, mm. um, uh, uh, Surveyor Lewis from Maison Doors. And so, mm. Like these, these these guys who like they may not be globally known, but they're people within our yeah, network on the rise, man. who are who are who are who are really trying yeah. and, and and trying this entrepreneurial stance and growth, mm. and it's exciting. Come on! And what I'm learning to do now is to embrace and reach out. So you know, you know, yeah. Nicole, you see Nicole and I, we are yeah. reaching out to. We see, I see a success story. I'm reaching out to them, saying, "Let's have a conversation." Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, even yeah. know. Like I was reaching out to. There's a brand that I saw recently. I, I, mm. I'll highlight them as well. Okay. I think it's important. Um, I think they're called the Local Kettle Brothers. Okay. Um, they are um, a jewelry brand and they make kind of like bespoke jewelry and they yeah. watch dealers and yeah. so on. But what attracted me to them is their branding. They've like the, on point. They've, they've come up with a rebrand that's very classic, okay. classy. They've got the Uncle G vibe. There's a few different things in their place. Mm. But I've reached out to them because I want to have a conversation because I see that it stands out to me. Mm. It's above the norm. They've mm. invested a lot in their content creation. Okay. Okay. And I want people to see examples that this as this it you know, the jewelry business isn't a new thing. It's not something that has just come out. But mm. what are you doing to set yourself that's aside? It. That's it. Right? That's it. And that's the thing, like when you're starting your business, it's kind of thinking like, how can I do something a little bit different? That's right. Or a little bit better. That's it doesn't right. always have to be the biggest, newest. Uh, what's the word like Quattro 2000 <laughs> well, well, I mean? thing, and, but and, you may have a Quattro 2000 as well but there know? are some basic things that people don't utilize or understand when it comes to business mm. you know sometimes people are so interested now in creating an online profile and mm. getting it out there without handling the basics mm. and we learn from mm. our experiences That's right it. that That's the it. basics will come back to bite That's you if they you don't will. handle them right and one of the key things that we've uh, really focused on now is not just building systems Yes. But actually following our system. Correct. So like we have a system which we didn't do in the first business. No. Didn't have a clear systems, didn't have clear roles and functions, didn't know how to hire, didn't know how we just didn't used to have get proper up job every descriptions. Day and so just like, think, right, what we do. We're gonna hustle today. <laughs> like, what are you doing? What I'm doing. Yeah. Right, we'll make it yeah, work. For real. And it's I, just and it's just that is a foundational tool. But well, if not applied, man, it can really hurt you. So, you know so what I'm saying? this is the thing that's really amazing, mm. right? Is that the simplicity of running a business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is is done. But and and I I say this to people. I said, yeah. do you know somebody that you've seen extremely successful, but in your mind you feel I'm way smarter than them and I have no clue how they're doing so well. Oh my days, yeah. Like, th there's a if lot. I'm of honest, people, if yeah, you're honest with it. yourself, yeah. you've seen that. Yeah. And one thing I've learned is that it is not ability that people lack, Come on, but dude. it's discipline, discipline, and consistency. <laughs> That's my two uh, things. Go, go, you heard you, you pressed that. Right? I'll, add, I'll add mine. Go, yeah, go this is my thing. Yeah. My things this year, and, and let me look in mm. the camera as I say this, right? <laughs> discipline and empathy. Those are my mm. things. Why do you say, why do you say, Bro, I get why because, you say discipline. So, so here's the thing. Let me hear your reasons. My reasons is that mm. those for me are the mm. fundamental difference and change mm. between success and failure for me self-analyzing myself. Just for yourself. Okay, and cool. what I've looked around there. Mm -hmm. Discipline, the ability to be systematic and mm. diligent in completing tasks, regardless of how you feel, mm. is powerful. Wow. Come it's on. super powerful. Because yeah, it's what like often, going to the gym. Like right, yeah. because what shifts us, yeah. us from cons is consistency. Yeah, I see, I see. That is what shifts and, and excess yeah. success. Yeah. The biggest um, word that people says, which is a complete 
misrepresentation of success mm. is luck. Mm. Change that word with consistency. Change it with discipline. It's the biggest you know I mean? lie that people believe. They believe mm. that people have luck. Luck is only created where effort meets opportunity. Come on. Therefore, it isn't luck. Mm. It's effort meeting opportunity yeah, when on. they coincide. So for me, when people say, ah, oh, you know, it takes a little bit of luck. No, no, no. It doesn't take a little bit of luck. Different things happen. And I believe that, mm. listen, we make no shame of the fact that we're Christians. Yeah, we don't believe all, in luck. All, yeah. all blessings come from come God. Come from God. But, yeah. but, but opportunities are created daily. Come on. Opportunities to exercise the blessings God has given yeah. us are there daily. Yeah. But the fact is that when it comes to connecting these two things, mm -hmm. when it comes to piecing them together, mm -hmm. we then put ourselves in a position to realize that it takes discipline. That's it, that's it. Now, empathy for me is mm -hmm. the other thing. The ability for me to take mm -hmm. and consider the person who is opposite me mm -hmm. is one of the most, if not the most powerful tool mm -hmm. in the planet. Go on, bro. Well, empathy as a designer, that's fundamental for me Correct. to be able to Why? design effectively. Why? Because if I don't take myself away from my own personal think, thoughts, feelings, etc., yes, I won't be able to put myself in someone else's shoes, yes, and design something based upon their needs, wants, desires, frustrations, goals, etc. Right. Uh, so that's why empathy is so important. But from a sales standpoint, empathy. Help me hear it from a sales well, standpoint. You know from what I mean? a sales standpoint, empathy is critical because mm. if you truly want to understand what your client needs are. Mm. The number one thing that anybody in sales wants to deliver to their client mm. is a sale, it's value. 100%, man. Sometimes you get the sale, but you uh, can't but deliver. you can't deliver the value. And then it hurts your reputation. And there's a beautiful scripture in the Bible that says that we should guard our reputation. It's like rubies and gold. I tell you something, you know I wouldn't I mean? be here today if it wasn't for my reputation. Mm. There are times when I've been in business where I've had challenging situations where yeah. things yeah. have not gone to plan. Yeah. And the only thing that's helped me come back is my reputation. Is that ability yeah. to say to someone, yeah. listen, trust me, I messed up here, yeah. but trust me, I'm going to fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is key. That's yeah. super key. That's yeah. And being honest with the client. Like, that's what, this is that where I made a mistake. That is worth yeah. more than any money that's it Faith. because the really yeah. true thing what we have to understand is people don't deal with you because of their product people deal wow. with you because of your character yeah there are many people who be out there to sell <laughs> but they deal with you because of your character yeah 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 do they like what, you why, why do you think I mean? people put non-disclosure and non-competition clauses on people when they leave a business mm, come on it's because you can leave that business mm -hmm. but if you're a quality cl uh, employee your character will take you far. Correct. And a business knows that. Correct. They Correct. know that if they value you, they think <laughs> yeah. it's a hold on. How do we protect ourselves? Correct. This guy is amazing. If yeah. he leaves here, yeah. we need some time to be able to adjust yeah. to that loss before That's he can go back into the market. That's it. That's so it. these are yeah. the kind of things which we have yeah. to be super yeah. mindful of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um and 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 kind of take it in yeah. in, so, in place. So when you are starting your business, yeah. there's a few things here I've wrote down that you definitely need. Yes. Um, basics basic stuff that we <laughs> took us a while to set up first and business it, i mean and, 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 this and is over seven so, years ago so one thing i will say yeah. as well super important like yeah. we will have people who are at different places and stages in their business yeah and also we'll have people around the world that are looking at this so yeah, we're going to look on. at this from the perspective of of we're trying to be as generic as possible mm. but one of one thing about the uk is that mm. Is one of the easiest places to set up a business no, it is. and the 100%, cheapest. cheapest. I have set up businesses in Europe. Wow. I've set up businesses in uh, on the continent, Africa, yeah. West Africa, yeah. um, and um, I'll tell you that by far the UK is the cheapest and easiest and easiest yeah. place to set up a business. I see. I see. Even in the states, I've done so in the states as well. Wow. There's nothing cheaper than the UK. You can have a business bank account, everything yeah. set up. Oh. Within an hour and for under a hundred pounds. Yeah. All of it. What do you say? Companies made simple. We don't really want to promote a man out here. Bro, like, listen, big, we're not big, getting, yeah, yeah. We're not getting, yeah, we're not getting keeping. Yeah, Companies yeah, made simple. Like. One, of the, one of the best online tools for company formation. Yeah. You can do everything yeah. on there. Yeah. A registered office, everything. So on. And, and for a, address, a, an affordable price. 100%. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you, could, you go to... Um, places like Cyprus and so on like that. You're talking 1,200 15. euros, 500 euros to 1,500 euros mm. to set up a company. Um, and so that's wait, if you're in the capital. UK, 
you should actually the United Kingdom, utilize this you, place. You need to be able to utilize this yeah. place because also you have to be able to utilize the fact that there are tax free allowances mm. for new businesses. Come on. Uh, you can also expense a lot of your day to day expenditure, which will be applicable to business expense. Get mm. a good bookkeeper, get a good accountant. Yeah. They're going to be able to help you um, in relation to that. I see. I see. Uh, the second thing that we need as well is some kind of, you know, yeah, you set up companies made simple or companies house, whatever your local government body is to yeah. set up a business. Yeah. Then you have to have a bank account. Correct. So you can go to your local bank for that. And then a payment processor. Yeah. Payment so processor. Uh, Stripe, so, PayPal, yeah. and, many and others out there. It, yeah, yeah. An intuitive way to make your clients give them multiple options of way in which to pay you, hmm. depending if your business is service or product Correct. based. Because I think in our, in our first business, everything was just pay straight to bank account. Correct. We didn't actually much use a, a service payment process. based business. Yeah. But what we found yeah. with a payment process is Because we use Stripe that, now. Well, and also it helps us when we're dealing with clients who um, have retainers and recurring payments. Correct. Especially it monthly. Makes it yeah. monthly, makes it a lot exactly. easier and 100%. accessible to deal with clients like yeah. that. And trust me, yeah. you want to give your clients the every opportunity possible to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want them to Correct. say, oh, no, I can't yeah. do this. Like you got to run a man down no, to pay no, his... No, no. Yeah, you want to give him you carry a pigeon, whatever it is. Correct. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> what's it called? Credit card, debit card... Apple Pay. Yeah, we Google take it all, bro. <laughs> we got Apple all the logos. Pay. You know the little yeah. logos, like <laughs> you can, you can. American Express. It's all good yeah. here. No good. problem at all. Yeah. But you want to. We live in a world where that ability um, is super important and super. Key. That's it. So, okay, talk to me, Fabian, about working for free. Uh, so, listen. <laughs> one of the things which is amazing about working for free and is that it's no, nothing is free. Come on, you're not That's working it. for free. What you're doing is you are investing, the cost is always met by someone. That's it. So That's when it. you're working, think of it as an exchange of service, right? Mm. If I'm working for you, you pay for my services. That's it. That's it. If you do not pay for my services, then I am paying for the opportunity to work with you. Mm. So instead of looking at, is it like I'm working for free? Yeah. A lot of cases, it's what am I gaining? Working for free, and you've seen me do this on more than one occasion, yeah. right? It opens doors for a way greater blessing and a way greater understanding in place. Yeah. And one of the key things for those understandings is the fact that, look, how am I going to take, there's a lot of pressure when someone's paying you for you to understand and learn about the business and manage expectations. Yeah, Working for free, for me, removes that pressure mm. and gives me insight into understanding that business inside out. That's it. Because there's times when you will take on a client and that client isn't suited for you. Mm. Or often when you're speaking to clients, they give you your best foot, that like the best position, mm -hmm. but they don't often give you a true representation of what's happening with their business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like to say um, that cost that I invest in myself in learning yeah. could save me in the long run That's in it. investing That's my it. time, which I yeah. view as yeah. incredibly valuable. Yeah. So that's why I think that working for free and also if you're new in business and you're serious about business, sometimes you don't have a budget to invest in marketing. You don't have the mm. budget to go out and be spending on SEO optimization or Google AdWords or these yeah. things, but you have your time as a budget. Yeah, and that's a great way to invest in your business is that's your it. time. That's it. That's it. And so, by working for free, remove that out of your mind. What you're doing is you're doing market research, mm -hmm. and you are investing, and you're also getting client testimonials mm -hmm. and a number of different yeah. things. In place. Yeah. Uh, another thing I found as well, especially is your ability to understand a market. Yes. So you could say like, all right, I'm working for fintech companies, right? But I don't have anything on my portfolio. Let me go and find one or two that I can do some free work for. And that kind of happened for me, me. where I, be, I basically had an agency I was working with. Then when I was working with that agency, I ended up doing some free work on the side within the fintech space. And that gave me a platform, uh, a platform to be able to now move into other fintech roles. Absolutely. Because of that one free role and then leveraging that in my interviews to say, hey, I've worked with X company. And then it's like, hey, but they didn't need to know that X company well, was a free job that I did, but it was quite a good name. So well, then when I mentioned that name in certain places or interviews at the time, boom, it got me in the doors. Do you see what I'm saying? So one of the greatest things about having you as a business partner, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you straight is that 
is trust, right? Hmm. You will trust me to go into a business idea or an opportunity which doesn't make an immediate commercial return yeah. when you see the future vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of time I've realized the importance of ownership and equity now. Mm. So there are times when there's a couple of occasions right now within our group, as you know that, mm. where we are dealing with opportunities which are not bringing immediate commercial return, mm. but instead there's an equity play. Mm. And we are investing our time to grow and accelerate oh, to get to that go. equity play. There you go. And we would have lost out if we would have accepted a retainer or an invoice, mm. when instead we now have a partnership or equity in that business. Yeah, come on. Come on. Um, about so you're five, thinking like 10 years now. Absolutely. You know I, I, I have to, I have to mm. be forward thinking. That's it. Because chasing invoices is one thing, mm. um, but chasing equity and ownership is a whole different ball game. It's a mm. whole different play. Mm. And that's the stage in my life where I'm at and where I want to be for my team. Mm. And I want to share that to say that, guys, look, we have businesses, we have opportunities to earn, but to change and direct generational wealth and, and to build long lasting yeah, legacy, equity ownership is, is important. Correct. Now let's be clear. Equity and ownership doesn't mean you're a CEO of everything that you're dealing with. Yeah. And not They're, all opportunities are good opportunities. And not all That's opportunities are good opportunities seen. that yeah. we, we've learned. So, uh, a lot of times when people be like, oh, why are you involved in a lot of business or how do you manage it? I can't run all the businesses that I'm involved mm. in. But we play key strategic positions in those businesses. And that's something that we're going to talk about even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Even now, I'd like to just segue into the fact that hmm. um, we are launching our mentorship program. Come on. The code real hub. soon. Yeah. Um, uh, under the Code Hub, which is our digital resource and learning platform. I'm excited. Are you excited about hey, mentoring? I'm very How excited. long have you been wanting to do mentoring, Leif? Like, tell at me, least, like, on a level. At least seven How plus long have years. you, okay. Yeah, over seven years. I think when we first get together, imagine, uh, even when the business was failing, we were still doing Teaching. Our, uh, our the events, Give 100, 100, right? The Pix 100, so the Pix 100 events, um, right? Yeah. But what helped us is we got specialists to speak at our events. Absolutely. And I think the value in just knowing that we're giving value to others. 100%. Free events, but we're paying to uh, either rent at the Shard at the time or yeah. rent at different locations. We had other locations at the time. But even the different locations we would have, we're yes. putting up money, but yes. giving this all away for free. Absolutely. And, and, I think and that that is like something I'm learning. There's power in that because there's so much we learned. Networks we were able to build. People love to have a stage. So people love to have a stage for to speak about their thing correct so it was a great way for us to network and build relationships yeah and even that one of those relationships from seven years ago we had a conversation with someone a couple of days ago right drop that name in right like and huge, i believe it helps huge to change and, games, and, and, you know and we're, we're gonna reveal a lot of that information in play but yeah. you see those seeds that we were planting at such an early 100%. stage now seven years I, back seven you know. years back uh, this mm -hmm. is our seventh mm -hmm. year anniversary that we're celebrating as a as a as a business partnership mm. it's so exciting to be in a position where we can share what we have learned working together and prior to those seven years yeah, yeah. and help to accelerate people in their startup phase. And you know, what what I'm gonna be focusing heavily on sales. Yeah. You're gonna be focusing heavily on digital, digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be focusing together on delivering the best quality mentorship program that we can deliver, 100%, right? Yeah, focus on our skill set, and that's the key thing. So one of the key things that we really wanna make sure is that you know, we're delivering value, we're being honest, we're being absolutely very clear about what we want to achieve. Yes. You know, uh, uh, one of the key things I want to make sure everyone gets and understands, if you do want to get in touch with us, yes. literally just go to the description box below absolutely. and you get all our contact details. If you want to know more about the mentorship program, there'll be a link in the description box so you can see it as well. And on social media, you'll see this pop up on the screen, follow at the code hub mm -hmm. dot co. Yes, correct. Yeah, on Instagram, on Instagram. the code hub dot co. Yep, um, yeah. the website as well. Um, and you you can click, you can v go to the code hub, the CEO, and um, we'll share the link in the description box to, re box to register for the mentorship program. You don't want to miss it. Only 20 spaces yeah. for Correct. this first, for first cohort. cohort. It's an eight week program, intensive yeah. program, eight weeks, two lessons per week. Mm -hmm. 
um, and you're not going to want to miss this. Um, I was so um, fortunate to just not too a couple of weeks ago got back from Ghana, mm -hmm. having run um, been one of the uh, chosen mentors for the European Union Ghana office. Um, it was a proud moment to be alongside some amazing. Uh, mentees um, uh, put together by the Bollore brand, my brother Bollore, yeah. an amazing entrepreneur, uh, a, a media empresario out in <laughs> um, in Ghana, Come on. and you know we were we flew over there, were able to to I was able to deliver a final um, lesson in person. And I was so encouraged, man. I, a lot of those mm. guys are going to be joining the the the, the mentorship course and program. Um, we're going to be reaching out to some of our PIX 100 um, alumni, mm. so to speak, <laughs> to get them involved. Yeah. I know Leif is super excited. Yeah. This man is he's an amazing teacher. He's passionate about teaching. When we talk about that Venn diagram, which I showed know. about everything in place, yeah, yeah, yeah. teaching you know would purpose. be in your center, right? Knowing your purpose. Yeah. So we're excited. And, and um, I think there's some incredible value that we're going to be delivering. Um, the cost simply is £99 per month for two months. That's it, that's it. Very basic. Um, we valued this at well over £500 per person. But we decided that just like you say about working for free, we want to learn and make sure we create the best mentorship program for that's us. It. So for as long as we can, we are going to provide this program, this eight-week program at one ninety nine pounds per month. It's a two month program, mm. at eight weeks, two lessons per week. Yeah, correct. Um, correct. As, you, as you know, not as you know, but this clearly isn't about covering our costs in yeah. doing this. <laughs> this is about research. It's about yeah. understanding. And it's about having a proven track record. Uh, we are new to this. This is something new. We're fresh. That's it. That's this it. is exciting. You're that's, gonna, that's you're why witnessing. We share it. Share the journey. And we want to share the journey. Like we moved mm -hmm. out of our studio. We moved into Leif's house. Yeah. Our studio. We took <laughs> one of his rooms. And yeah. God has blessed it with a beautiful home. And mm. we've dedicated one of the rooms. This famous sofa you would have seen us record on mm -hmm. before. We took our sofa with us. That's it. Right. And and we are we are going to be doing our podcasts. I'm going to be coming here a couple times a week, building up content. Mm -hmm. Excited to share that content with you. Excited to just take things to the next level. The next right? level. That's it. That's it. Uh, so if you want to know more, literally, like I said. Go to the codehub.co, the codehub.co. That's right. And also just li click the link in the description box to apply to our mentorship program. And then as always, if you want to let us know more in the comments, just let us know what you'd love to hear from and us we'll next. we'll add our own personal tags here so that you can follow, yeah. DM. We do our best to respond yeah, to Instagram. everything. Yeah, share Instagram. your Instagram, bro. Uh, my Instagram is at mm -hmm. FSTCMG. That's at FSTCMG. Mm -hmm. Um, on mm -hmm. X, which used to be Twitter, it's mm -hmm. Fabian Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Um, on TikTok, it's at FSTCMG. That's about it. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm trying, but th those are, that's right, what on. you can. Yeah, catch and just me. follow me on Instagram. It's Leif underscore Wallace, and just DM us if you've got any questions for Absolutely, us. Absolutely, man. We're excited. Um, we're getting started. At Code Group, Code Hub. Uh, we're going to tell you about flow converts. We'll tell you about Iridium Law. We'll tell go. you about LC Tech. We'll tell you about the come businesses <laughs> as we cover that we're involved that's in, it, what we it. do on a day to day basis. And we're super excited. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Take care.